Hi everyone, I am getting ready to assemble a kick sled, the traditional birch framed kick sled. And I wanted to film it so that you guys can see how I do it. Um, this should take 10 minutes and I really need only three tools to get through this. So a size 10 socket wrench, a screwdriver, and some type of clippers. I am using these heavy duty ones. This is what we have in the shop. Scissors will do the job. Um, but all of the sleds come packaged and flat like that. You can see behind me. The sled I'm assembling today is a T7. So I will get started. You just have to open up the packaging. It's a pair of scissors is where this comes in handy here and then the cardboard is stapled so you just want to pop it open at these staples and be careful not to cut yourself on them and it just folds open and then i'll lift the handlebar up a little bit there's a bag inside. I take this out. I'll go through that in a second. So this bag that comes in there includes footrests. So there's two footrests and a reflecting arm that folds out. We're gonna put these on at the end of the assembly process. So the first thing that I do is lift up the seat it folds and comes forward then the next thing I do is lift up the main part of the sled and I put my feet on the footrest while doing this and I kind of loosen it up a bit. The next thing that I do, if you guys can see this, um, is you undo these wing nuts. They do come all the way off. I don't take them off and you push them forward and pull, bring this seat back, hold these legs down. And this seat is gonna line up with these wing nut bolts. You may need to adjust them. And then you may need to pull the handlebar back a little bit or forward, whatever it takes to line these up. And then I tighten it up a little bit. And then the next thing I do is these carriage bolts on the sled here need to be taken off basically and you need to um, do the top one not the bottom but the top one here this is where i use the size 10 socket wrench and just take these off both sides So then these legs that were loose earlier, you wanna bring them back and line them up. And you can see I'm totally not even close here. So what I need to do is pull the handlebar back to get these to line up. I'm gonna tighten this up again because these came pretty loose. I keep going back just a little bit for this one to line up. So now they're lined up and you wanna tighten these back up. And once these are tightened up, if you are in, you know, if you have icy conditions, your sled is almost, almost entirely ready to go. You just need footrest. But what we're doing today is it's a powder day outside. So I'm putting plastic runners on this sled. So I'll show you that. I do the runners 
On new sleds, I do the runners before I put on the footrests. The footrests are kind of spiky and you'll see as I put on the plastic runners, uh, it's nice to not have spikies on your hands. So these are tightened up. So this sled is set up, assembled. Um, that took five minutes, plus me talking. So to put runners on, I flip the sled over. Like so. Now I'll try and scoot back so you can see it. Maybe, maybe I move the camera back. I'm gonna move you guys back. The runners come in this plastic bag. This is another time for snippers because they are taped on one end. So without doing anything to the runners, just get this tape off of here. The runners come with zip ties already. So you can see they're already on there. And those zip ties are gonna go through a hole up at the top of the seal runner. And the trick to that is when you're putting the runner on to run the zip tie through and have the zip ties, when you're done, the zip tie extra material should be pointing at one another on the inside of the sled. The reason I do that is because at the end, you're gonna clip the extra material off and it just becomes like a sharp edge and uh, that'll catch on things. In particular, from experience, it's caught on my arm when I've been putting it in a car just because I accidentally did it the wrong direction. And I just recommend pointing them inside the sled where they're not going to have that problem. So you can basically, you clip it on at the top and then I clip, like I snap on a little bit more here, and then yank on these zip ties, make sure they're nice and tight. So that one's set. So then you can just push it. I'll stand up so you can see. Push it on like that. And you just work your way all the way down the runner. So. This is something where this plastic isn't gonna cooperate with you if you're doing this in the cold. So you wanna be doing this inside at room temp. Otherwise this plastic just won't cooperate with you. The zip ties won't cooperate with you. It's not gonna work in the cold. So just a note about that. So. Something else, just the talking about zip ties. Not a bad idea to take them with you when you're out kick sledding, especially if you're going out on a longer kick sled. Um, in case you hit anything sharp along the way and it's cold, double whammy. Um, so you don't want your runner to fall off. They, that's not very common, but just if you want to be prepared, maybe take an extra with you. Okay, so the runners are on this sled. The next thing I do is I clip the extra zip tie material. So you can see, I'll put the sled on the side. So yeah, I just clip this. And that's set. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is throw on the footrest. So I don't have an exact science to this, but I recommend you stand on the foot rat or stand here and imagine you're kicking where your feet are gonna land. So about here. And these just snap on as well. And also this is what I was talking about with them being pointed. So these can be taken off and moved on the trail. So if you put these on and realize later, 
that your foot isn't lining up, you can just take it off on the trail and snap it back on. These will cooperate a little bit better. They're smaller in the cold. So that's how I put them on, just get it started and then I do the rest with my foot. So the next thing is a reflector. This is a safety feature basically. So this attaches on the crossbar of the kick sled. And this is where you need the screwdriver. And I just unscrew it a little bit because it comes and it's all the way through. And then I snap it apart here by putting it using the screwdriver. So you can see that. So then this clasps on and the screwdriver's on the top. I do it on the right side of the kick sleds. So I just put this on the bottom, put the one piece with the screw on top. And this means this is gonna fold in and out the right direction there. And then you can kind of clasp them together like that. You can see it's there. I put one hand under. Okay, so that's really tight fit. Like I said, folds out so when you're going, traffic can see you from the front and the back. There's a reflector on both sides. When it's not in use and when you're about to fold up your sled, you always want to fold that in. Otherwise, if you were to fold down your sled um, over time, if it just it ends up bent. Okay, so that is an assembled sled. I am going to be sending it out the door, so I'm going to be unfolding the sled. So at the very end, this is... Um, what you want to do is undo these wing nuts, push them forward. You might need to wiggle the handlebar a bit, lift that seat up. I don't know if you can see that very well, but... And then it folds down, like so. And it's good to go. All right, thanks.